Hi everyone, it's me Darlene. I am here with what I think is going to be a very quick and easy quilt and a good size one at that. I recently had a sale and I had five sets total left of these four colors. I'm using one. I will have four available um, on my blog and the details will be in the description box of this video if you want to go buy a set. These particular colors are two shades of green, two shades of yellow that don't quite match, but I love them together. I called it lemon and lime. These two have little stars and these two have dots. I just think they look so spring-like and I love it. I'm going to try to use almost all this fabric in one quilt by cutting big, gigantic rectangles. It should go together really quick and I'm just anxious to see how it's going to go. So uh, if you get this fabric, you're going to get half yards. I'm not pre-cutting the, the rectangles for you. And obviously you don't have to get this fabric because I will run out quickly and you can use your own. But you only need four half yards. I think this is going to be one of my new favorites. Let's just go ahead and see. Okay, I'm going to uh, turn the camera off and I'm going to measure. Now I cut these. If you get mine, I'm pretty close usually to 19 inches, sometimes even a little bit more. But I'm not going to, you know, like cut 9 inch squares because, you know, just in case. I don't want you to be too close to the edge of 18. So I think I'm going to go 8.5 wide and then I'm going to figure out how long the rectangles can be. We're going to have 8 rectangles from each half yard and we're going to have 32 in all. We are only going to need 30 so the last two that are left over they can go into a little pillow or something. Let me just lay these out and I will show you how I'm cutting. Here is what I am going to do. I have my half yard cut. My salvages are up there. I'm going to fold up. I'm going to make a straight edge and I'm going to cut two strips eight and a half inches wide. There is my straight edge and now I am counting over eight and a half. And another eight and a half. And we've got this left over. Now I'm going to take these strips and I'm going to stack them this way. I can totally do ten and a half, so my rectangles will be eight and a half by ten and a half. You can cut them any old way you want, but I'm going to cut here and then at ten and a half and another ten and a half. Sounds like fun to me. Very little scraps there. You got this and this. And I have my eight rectangles and I know I did not press my fabric. I know some of you that drives you frigging crazy. It doesn't bother me. I'm going to do the same thing to the other three pieces. We are done cutting our rectangles. Very good. Now I'm just going to lay them out and I'm going to do like a diagonal. It's going to be kind of hard to show you, but you'll certainly see it at the end. Here's what I'm going to do. I am going to show you each and every row that I lay out because I'm going in a particular order. I have the dotted green, dotted yellow, star green, star yellow, and then it's going to repeat. So dotted green, dotted yellow, star green, star yellow. The next one would be dotted green, 
So that's my first row. Let me put it together. I don't think I mentioned, I'm not sure, but we are doing five across by six down. It will make it quite a bit taller than wide because we have the extra row plus their rectangles and the rectangles are going down this way, lengthwise this way. So here's my first row and I did press it now and I pressed all the seams to one side. The next row I will press all the seams to the other side because it really does help to make it, you know, flatter, it nests and all that stuff. Uh, so let me lay out the other row and I'll show you the order so we can get the diagonal thing going. Okay, you can already start to see the diagonal thing going on. So you can just follow that if you want, but I just like, you know, like counting it off. Dotted green, dotted yellow, star green, star yellow, dotted green, dotted yellow, star green, star yellow, dotted green, dotted yellow. That's just the way I do it. I find that I don't make mistakes that way. So now I'm going to put this row together. I'm going to press the seams in the other direction and I am going to sew those two rows together right now. This is what we have so far. We'll be making three pieces like this. Three pieces with two rows and then I will sew those together. But I still need to leave this one out because I need to see what order my next row is going to be. And I'm going to put a pin. Where's my finger? Right there. I'm going to put a pin at the top left and that makes me know that that's the top corner of this piece and it's the number one piece. Okay, so let me set up the next row. I just realized it's probably confusing saying star green, star yellow, dotted green, dotted yellow. That's just because those are the prints that I have. But you can name your blocks, you know, if you have four prints like I do, A, B, C, D. And then it's just going to repeat A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D, A, B, C. And then D would be here. But for this particular one, in case you're using these fabrics or something like them, I am on star green, star yellow, dotted green, dotted yellow, star green. This is row number three for me. The top row is sewn together and I did it each square at a time. I don't like that because I went downhill a little bit each time. I'll make up for that in the seam allowance. I'd rather put two pieces together two pieces together and then add that last piece, you know, and sew them together like that. We uh, tend to have straighter rows when we do it that way. Or it could have always been done four patch. That's the best way to go. If you can lay it all out, you can do four patches and that keeps things pretty even. But I didn't have the room to set that up. So my row is going to be star yellow, dotted green, dotted yellow, star green, star yellow. And I'm going to go put it together and I will connect it to that one. And I have section number two complete. Let me set up section number three. Okay, here are my final two rows. They're hanging because I went off the last row of that one. And I have dotted green, dotted yellow, star green, star yellow, dotted green, dotted yellow, star green, star yellow, dotted green, dotted yellow. I am going to put those two rows together completely and then I will sew my three parts together and we are done. This screams spring, but you can use any colors you want. All you need to know are the size of my blocks. They were eight and a half by ten and a half. And, you know, it goes together really quick when you use big blocks like that. And I think I've got all my diagonals going in the right color order. I really like the diagonal look. And this measures, oh, let me look, 40.5 wide by 58.5 long. That's nice size. So again, I have the uh, four sets of those half yard cuts. On my blog, link is in the description. This quilt top, and it's only the top, you need to add the batting and the backing. That is on eBay, starting at one penny with free shipping for anyone in the USA. Starting at one penny means that's the initial bid. 
um, and then it goes up in price. Some people say, I thought it was a penny. No, 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 it starts at a penny. Suddenly it just started raining and it scared me. <laughs> I do want to mention that I have some perfect intersections and some that are really off. And I mention that because someone will win this on eBay and I want them to be aware there's no level of perfection in my quilt tops. I will take some close-ups so you can see that in the slideshow at the end. I don't know what else to say other than that was a pretty easy quilt and it only takes two yards total of fabric four half yard cuts go dig through your stash and see what you can find and make one thank you so much for watching i will be back with more soon bye